Hi, I'm Sarah Lindball. And I'm Rebecca Stern. And we are at West Forsyth High School and we're doing The Drowsy, the Drowsy Chaperone. Man in chair, when he starts the show, he goes, I'm feeling a little bit blue. Um, so I'm gonna play this record for you. Um, and, and that's what I really wanted the kids to find was let's find your bluebird, let's find your thing that sparks you, that why you're here, and where we're not focusing on all the awful things that are going on in the world right now. Let's have an escape for an hour where we're playing with the drowsy chaperone, we're listening to this record, we're telling the story together, um, and we're basking in the joy of our art for a minute. Okay, so we chose this show. Um, we were watching all of our placement auditions at the very beginning of the year, and I noticed that all of our boys had this wonderful, like, classical sound to their voices. And the show we had originally picked was a much more modern show, and I've wanted to do the show for forever because I just think it's it's so sweet, it's so funny, but there's so much heart to it. Um, and I looked at Sarah and I go, "We got to do the Drowsy Chaperone. We have the boys. Please, can we do the Drowsy Chaperone?" We always like to see our cast members come away with a new skill with every show that we do. And so we actually had four of them this show we were excited about. So the one of the biggest ones was learning to tap. And realistically, learning to dance for the majority of our cast. <laughs> uh, they had never really danced before, let alone tapped. So we were really excited to get them to learn those skills. We brought in awesome choreographer Kenneth Green, and he led us through multiple tap boot camps and then really put our cast through the paces. Larger than life characters. Um, that was our second thing that we really wanted um, our students to come away with. The Drowsy Chaperone takes place in this fantastical world of this musical that the man in chair has imagined. We really wanted to lean into the vaudevillian aspect of this. We want to throw in as many of those vaudeville tropes into the show as we possibly could and one of that one of those aspects is having a huge 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 character. I, I think you can't choose a show unless you're really highlighting those specific performers that you are working with and so specifically we wanted to highlight Grace who plays Janet Vandergraaf or I guess Jane Roberts, it's right? Janet Vandergraaf. Janet Janet Vandergraaf, and uh, we wanted to highlight her singing abilities. She's an amazing actress, she's an amazing vocalist. We really wanted to showcase and highlight all of those um, talents and go a step further and help her to create a character that is uh, farcical. Hi, I'm Grace Dormany. I'm playing Janet Vandergraaf, and Janet is a very glamorous showgirl who is giving up the stage for someone she loves very much. And she's kind of conflicted through all that. So this is kind of about her journey, trying to figure out what she wants and how she's going to live the rest of her life. So, yeah. We also wanted to feature another one of our seniors, James, and he's got a beautiful voice, and it's a voice that really blossomed in the past year, I'd say. And so he does have a more legit classical sound. We thought that this would be a great role for him, and he'd actually never tap danced before, and so learned to tap dance and learned to dance all the way through whole feet, which was really unique. I'm James Loveland. I play Robert Martin, um, and my character, he is the the groom-to-be who is deeply in love with Janet. He is the classic 1920s leading male, dashing and just overly cheesy. In the role of Adolfo, we have um, a really fantastic actor, um, Merrick. He is hilarious. What I really appreciate about Merrick is that he's a very technical actor. Um, I can say, hey, I need you to put more weight in your hips, and I really need you to make this character more uh, lower centered. Um, and he'll take a note like that. Uh Another senior that we really wanted to feature is Greer Friedman. He plays the producer and he is also kind of made for this role. It's really great for him. He's got excellent comedic timing and he is a great actor. And something that he's been working on in this role is his singing and his dancing as well. He wants to pursue musical theater and so we're excited to help him grow in this role and um, to see all that he can do, which is great. 
Colby, who plays Kitty, um, is just made to play this part. Um, she is hilarious and just a little ball of energy, um, a little firecracker on stage. Um, she had tapped before, so it was really lovely to have her in this role kind of being a leader in Toledo Surprise and um, helping out her castmates who hadn't tapped before. Ava Nelson, she's our drowsy chaperone, and so we didn't know if she was going to audition for that role. And so when she did, she blew us away. She is such an awesome person with a, an eccentric personality and, a, and a, an amazing sense of personal style. And so she brought that to Drowsy, which was really neat. Lastly, um, we have Sam, who is actually Ava's twin brother, so it's really fun. We have we have a set of twins playing Man in Chair and Dress Chaperone. Um, and Sam, again, similar to his sister, I don't know if we were eyeballing him for this role specifically, but um, we were in callbacks, and Sarah coached him through a scene, and it was just magic. It was, oh, I see it. Um, and he brings such just a lovely presence to the character. We had uh, two additional performers that we were looking forward to featuring as soon as we saw their audition. Uh, their chemistry together is adorable, and we knew that they had to be together as Tottendale and Underling. So we were so excited um, for Paige and Aiden to get to play both of those parts. And so that was really exciting. I think what's really cool about the way that Becca and I work is that she is awesome about all of the outside acting, physicality, all of those things, whereas I work from the inside out. So <laughs> we're a great team because I can really focus on the, the internal character development, the building of the circumstance, really uh, working to ask what is it that that character wants and how are they going to get it and um, what does that look like. Our third skill was to teach our students how to sing four-part harmony and be able to excel in an ensemble setting while dancing and acting and singing at the same time. Do it all, so, all the time. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> we worked really hard on the ensemble music for this show. That We also worked hard on the, the solos as well, and so and our cast really excelled at that. But I'd say something that um, they really grew in was the ensemble sound. We worked to really solidify balance in our chords and to ensure that the sound was lush and full throughout the entirety of the show, even if they were tap dancing and couldn't breathe afterwards. They, they, I think they built a lot of stamina through this process and we were really excited to see just how beautiful the ensemble sound came together. <laughs> The big challenges that we faced in this production, first and foremost, obviously, is that we are in the middle of a pandemic. And so we had a lot of guidelines to follow, specifically social distancing during rehearsals, uh, mask wearing during rehearsals. We did everything we could to remind our students to wash their hands, stay hydrated, eat beautiful foods, and to really Drink take water. care. Yeah, <laughs> to, to really take care of themselves. So we were really hopeful that we could continue on with the show despite our challenge with the pandemic. I'd say one of the biggest challenges too was learning to tap. So a lot of our students, again, this was brand new to them and so this was out of their comfort zone and sometimes when individuals are outside of their comfort zone it comes across as being really discouraged. Uh, tap's not easy, especially the level of tap that we were doing, which I guess, I don't know if that's big level or not, but for me it was because I had never done that. And so it was a good experience overall. In the show, the bluebird is not really a th thing, but as the whole song, as we stumble along, is just describing life and how it's not really the most <laughs> easiest thing. You don't just breeze through it and, well, you stumble, really. But as long as you can see that little bluebird, which is one of the lines, um, you'll just have something that will help guide you through it and get through it. It was a really awesome opportunity for our students to realize that not only did they get to find that joyful moment in this show, but they get to share that gift with our audience members as well. Crumble, crumble.